Well, greetings out there in YouTube land, and welcome to today's video. Although Rusty Jack and I are retired from doing any amp repairs for customers, uh, from time to time we make an exception, especially if the amp is very old, rather unusual, or made in Texas. In this case, all three criteria are met, but first we have to subject uh, the box uh, prior to opening to a CAT scan from Jack. Here we have Jack. Uh, performing the first sniffing. Of course, uh, I'll open the box and let him then sniff the contents. But based on his interest in this amp, I think we can determine whether or not this is going to be a very difficult restoration. Uh-oh, he's up on the box. That means this might be a tough one. Okay, let's open it up and see what's inside. Well, it looks like we have an Alamo Dart. Uh, I'll talk more about Alamo amps uh, in a little while and we'll take a close look at the inside of this one. Uh, but they were made in San Antonio, Texas, which makes them near and dear to my heart. You also see that during shipment the speaker grill cloth got pushed in a bit by the packing material. Okay, let's drag this jewel out to the workshop and take a close look at what we've got. Jack just can't get enough of this. Well, Rusty, are you ready to help me with this Alamo amp? Or do you want some dog cookies? Uh, I think we know which you would prefer. Okay, we've got this little jewel out in the workshop. Uh, we see that the speaker has been changed uh, for a Weber Signature 10-inch speaker. I believe that this amp came originally with like a five and a half inch cracker box speaker. And look at the unusual tube complement and these really crazy little tube holders that are their springs that hold the tubes in their socket. See we've got a 12 AU6, 35 C5, 35 W4, and a 12 AV6. Not a real uh, traditional tube complement. Now I know what you're thinking, this is not exactly a Fender Tweed uh, Pro amp, but uh, all God's amps need love, okay? So let's uh, take a look at this. I understand it's completely just stone dead and uh, try to figure out what's wrong. Whether this is your dream amp or not, the procedures that I follow uh, should be helpful to you in diagnosing problems with your own recently acquired amps. So let's get started. Step one, I just uh, hook it up to the current limiter and turn it on, see what happens. In this case, a really stout, probably 60 cycle hum, and not much else. Uh, let's see if it uh, can take any sort of input. Okay, I cranked up the volume a little bit. Let me see, I put in a jack. I'm gonna touch the input prong. I don't hear any hum in response to my touching this. So uh, it's accepting no input. Uh, I'm thinking there's some serious problems with the power supply to produce this 60 cycle hum. Uh, I know you're thinking, well, the power supply should be 120 cycles. Well, let's see why that's not true in this case. Okay, I unsoldered the two speaker leads, uh, removed the chassis, flipped it over, and set it down on my extremely high-quality uh, chassis stands. And let's take a look at the inside. Now, the moment I said that two of the tubes begin with a number 35, I think most of you realized that this is a transformerless circuit. In other words, it does not have a power transformer. This is done to save a lot of money on production costs so that this amp could be sold uh, very inexpensively. It works on the principle that the 120 volts from the wall socket, instead of requiring uh, filament transformers to provide uh, voltage and current to uh, six uh, V6s and 12AX7s and tubes like that, it allows the filaments of the uh, vacuum tubes to drop that 120 volts down to zero so no filament transformers are necessary. If you add up the first digits of all four tubes, it's 12, 12, 35, 35, and that's going to give you, what, 94 
uh, volts uh, of drop for your incoming uh, AC. The uh, balance uh, of the what 26 volts or so uh, will be absorbed by a resistor somewhere in here, which I'll have to find. Could be this one right here. Um, now, uh, the downside of that is there is no isolation between this circuit and the wall socket. And therefore, if you're grounded, and uh, if there is an internal short somewhere where something uh, in here can get to ground, uh, being the chassis, and you touch the chassis and you're grounded, you can have the heck shocked out of you, uh, perhaps fatally. Whereas this would not be an issue in an amplifier that was isolated from the wall voltage uh, by a power transformer. So, uh, one of the main ways to overcome this uh, shock hazard is to install the three wire power cord, which it has. You see here the uh, green wire is soldered uh, down here to this lug, which goes uh, directly to the chassis itself. So the owner has taken uh, one precaution to have the three wire cord installed and also what appears to be new filter caps. Okay, as well as some other uh, tone capacitors here. So uh, uh, you can see why he's a little puzzled on uh, why after all this work spent on this amp and money uh, it's now got a horrendous 60 cycle hum and won't play. Let's see if we can figure out why. Now to the best of my knowledge uh, there is no uh, schematic available on the internet for this circuit. There is a truly hideous uh, layout drawing that I could find, which was really more confusing than helpful. Uh, so we're going to have to proceed without a schematic. Uh, a lot of you contact me uh, sometimes and say, hey, can you help me out with a schematic? And uh, all I do is the same thing you need to do, which is an internet search. Uh, and when you can't find one, um, draw it yourself. Okay, I'm going to trace the circuit and draw one just for information purposes, but in uh, a normal case I probably wouldn't bother. I'd just go in, because these things all operate in the same basic principles, just go in and fix it. But I am going to trace the circuit and draw up some sort of diagram here so we can get an idea of how this beast works. And one of the main sources of bewilderment are that it has two transformers. Uh, normally these only have one. This is going to be the output transformer. We can see where it connects here to the speaker. But what in heaven's name is the purpose of this transformer? Um, remember, uh, there is no need for a power transformer, and I can't see them including a filter choke on an economy circuit like this. So when I draw up the schematic, we're going to figure out what the heck does this do? Every once in a while, I find things in amps that have been worked on by, I guess, amp techs, um, and they just make me scratch my head in disbelief. Look, take a look here. Here's the AC input. Here's the black, the hot wire, and it comes over here to the switch, the on-off switch as it should. Leaves the other side of the switch, comes over here to the neon indicator light, and then passes to the indicator light and comes over here to an unused pin on this tube. Let's look at what the other side, the return side of the AC input does. It comes over here and connects directly to the black wire. Now, in other words, all we have here when we turn the amp on is a loop that passes through the neon bulb. Now here, I think you can see that the negative ends of the two new filter capacitors come over here to this clump of wire and then come down and they aren't grounded. They're, what, 22,000 ohms? away from ground? Is there any wonder why this thing hums? And speaking of hum, the reason the power supply in this amp would hum at uh, 60 cycles instead of 120 is that the 35W4 is a half wave rectifier. So we're getting that sawtooth 60 cycle output from the rectifier and then because that a significant ripple in a 60 cycle sawtooth output from a half wave rectifier is not filtered because the filter capacitors aren't grounded, uh, you heard the result and it's not a pretty sound. Okay, let's take a look at the circuit as I've drawn it so far. The black uh, primary 
input comes here through the switch, through the neon bulb, through a 100 uh, ohm uh, high wattage resistor, through the filament of the 35W4, through the filament of the 35C4, and through the filament of the 12AV6, all as it should. Then it comes through the primary of a small transformer, that mysterious transformer that sits over here on the side. And it should return up here to the white common lead, but the white lead instead is connected over here, short-circuiting the entire process. Therefore, I need to connect the white lead to this end of the primary of this uh, strange little transformer. Speaking of that little transformer, uh, it appears to be an isolation transformer that isolates the filament of the 12AU6 from the rest of the filament circuit. Why you would do that, I'm not sure. It is the uh, first preamp tube. Do you, uh, um, maybe it cuts down on hum. I'm not sure why this was done. In an amp where everything possible has been done to conserve money, I don't think they would have put this in here if it didn't really help in the function. But that little transformer can't work unless there is a complete circuit through it. And back up here to the white uh, return lead of the AC uh, input. Well, this has turned out to be way more of a project than I expected. I've had to completely rewire the input jacks, volume control, uh, all of the connections to the 12AU6, uh, the, all of the connections to the 35C5, and even the rectifier was wired wrong. Um, that's the 35W4. Uh, but I do have it working. I'm going to plug it in now and demonstrate that to you. Okay, I've got it plugged in back here to the current limiter, and I've got the two uh, secondary outputs from the output transformer connected to the speaker that's still mounted in the cabinet. Okay, let's turn it on here and see how it works. Um, also, while we're waiting for it to warm up, I should say that the pilot light was wired wrong. It's a neon bulb operating at 120 volts. You can't have it in series with the filaments because the neon bulb will not allow sufficient current to flow uh, for the tubes to work properly. I have a dummy input jack here with the exposed contact. Now listen, when I touch that with my finger you can hear that loud buzz, which means, and judging from the volume of the buzz, the amp's working quite well. Okay, now it's time to approach the tremolo circuit, which I have gutted simply because, again, almost every single wire and component connected to the oscillating tube was done incorrectly. Okay, after working without a schematic and rewiring probably 75 or 80 percent of the entire circuit, including the tremolo, we finally get to that happy point where we can actually strum a few chords. I think you can hear the tremolo effect. on maximum. Fast. Slow.
Here's a pointer for those of you who can't find a schematic for the amplifier that you're trying to work on. First off, if the chassis is unmolested, you can pretty well just go in and rely on the values that are in place and just simply replace the bad components. But when you encounter an amp like this Alamo Dart uh, that had been so butchered over the years, you really can't trust the position or value or, or of any of the components. Therefore, just as sort of a basis for the uh, rewiring that I had to do, uh, I found the closest match I could to the circuit in the Alamo Dart. And the Sears Silvertone Model 1430 is almost identical. A 12AU6 as the first preamp tube, a 50C5 instead of the 35C5 that we have in the Dart, but that's no big issue because the tubes are identical except for the voltage that's applied to the filament. Also we have a 35W4 rectifier. Notice down here is that strange little isolation uh, transformer that uh, provides a isolated filament output for our 12AU6 uh, preamp tube. So I use this as a basis for my rewiring of the Alamo Dart circuit. The Dart, however, has a tremolo, uh, whereas the Silvertone Model 1430 does not. So I found a Alamo amplifier that actually has a tremolo using a 12AV6 oscillator tube. And I just duplicated this. Uh, I also added, uh, you notice here is the speed control, which the uh, Dart has. The Dart also has an intensity control, which the Alamo Fiesta does not. So I uh, added an intensity control up here. All it is really is just like a volume control, where we're feeding more or less of our tremolo uh, input to the grid of the, in our case, 35L6 output tube. The Fiesta call for a 2.2 meg resistor here, but through experimentation I found that uh, the tremolo worked a lot better with a 180k resistor in this place. So even though I couldn't find a, an Alamo Dart schematic on the internet, I found two schematics that would work to help me, to guide me, to put this poor mistreated circuit uh, back into working order. Another approach is to take a close look at the circuit and draw it out on a piece of paper. This is the filament circuit uh, for the uh, Alamo Dart and uh, by drawing this I found out why none of the tubes would light because the black wire came here through the neon bulb and through the filaments of three tubes and the primary of the isolation transformer for the 12AU6 but then came up here in a blind loop. The white wire which should have gone down here to the other end of the filament transformer instead short-circuited over here right after the neon bulb. By drawing this it became very evident to me what was wrong. I then attached the white wire down here and we have our series circuit which allows all our filaments and our isolation transformer to work. Okay, we have the mighty Alamo Dart all buttoned up and ready to go home. As you can hear, it's just about dead quiet. None of that wretched 60-cycle uh, half-wave rectified hum. Let's play a few chords through it. It's at, uh, say, medium, about midway volume, and no tremolo. Pretty good, nice and clean, uh, good volume. Okay, let's crank up the volume a little, see if we can get some distortion out of this beast. Yep, we can. Now according to the internet, uh, the Alamo Dart has a wretched tremolo. And I think they're wrong. Uh, with the slight modifications that I made to this one, let's see what you think of it. This will be at medium intensity and medium speed.
Before we go, I wanted to say a few words about Alamo amps, as promised. Uh, they were built from 1949 all the way up to 1982 by an organization uh, called Southern Music in San Antonio, Texas. From 1949 to 1973, they were all tube circuits and uh, became rather well known for excellent tone, uh, rather inexpensive prices, uh, and uh, pretty good quality overall. And because they're made in Texas, Rusty and I just can't say no when asked to repair one. Well, to show my appreciation to Rusty for all his help in making this video, he and I are going to share some of these special pumpkin flavored dog cookies. First I get my bite. Now it's your turn, Rusty. Not bad. Thanks again. Well, that about does it uh, for this video on the restoration of the Alamo Dart amplifier. Uh, some of the principles demonstrated uh, in this video, such as how you can get along without a schematic, or how you can trace the circuit yourself and make certain modifications to improve how it operates, uh, I think can be applied to any amplifier circuit that you're working on. So with that in mind, I just want to say thanks from Rusty, Jack, and myself, and we hope to see you again in the near future. And meanwhile, stay tuned and stay healthy. Bye for now.